Dude, you know what I was thinking? Not- Wait, no, no I was. No, you got. Mm, no. no, hold on. No, I, I was gonna no, tell no, you. You. God damn it. Crap. <laughs> Welcome back. We have the entire group here today. Uh, Alan, say what's up. What up? I'm back. I'm not sick anymore. Alan's not sick anymore. Glad to have him back. Chris is here again this week and new edition, Hunter. So we're really excited about that. This week's guest, Jeremy Jones from Back Woo! to Life. And Numskull. Wow, and the numbskull. crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out, man. Absolutely. We really appreciate your time and the, uh, <clears throat> the, the bit of a dip you took to get out here, man. Uh, it's all good. He's a dip boy. He's a dippy boy. He said that. <laughs> hey, I don't mind driving, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's like mostly highway, so. No, that's cool. It's, that's good. Um, so we wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, your music today and what band you're in. I know you just uh, released an EP, is that correct? Yeah, Back to Life released an EP. <sighs> I should know this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Dude, us okay, about the okay, things man. that you do. I think beginning of November, like right at the beginning of November. Okay. It's all called right. No Chance in Hell. All right. All right. I'm, on I'm all your streaming it. platforms. Ooh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and so you guys are on like Spotify and all that stuff, so that's really exciting. Um, super accessible. Super accessible. Um, tour. Are you guys touring at all right now, or are you going to be? Did you just come off a tour? We just did a, I guess, weekender. It started on, uh, yeah, it was Wednesday, Friday, Saturday with uh, our <laughs> friends in Forced Under. Yeah, it's kind of a really weird. It's fuck Thursday. Yeah. Thurs- well, I had to work. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Had to I'd, break it up. Yeah, I had to break it up a little bit. But yeah, with our friends in Forced Under, they're from Maryland. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We didn't even get to play Friday, so that was cool. What? what? Okay, so. Yeah, d- dive. Yeah, dive, dive in. in. So Kurt drove, because he's a loner, drove by himself. <laughs> Keen, I don't, he might have had Keen. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Are you sure I just Kurt get there, was alone? <laughs> I just get there by myself. Okay. Hey, so I picked up Tyler in Hummelstown. Drove there. We made it. We were a half hour from Allentown. And then it was like dead stop traffic. And I was like, oh, this will pass. Three and a half hours. What we the sat there. fuck? And it was what Kurt, said, Kurt ended up sending me like two and a half hours in this like news article about the traffic. I guess the traffic. And it was like two tractor trailers broke down side by side on the highway. Oh my God. Uh, one broke a drive shaft and the other one was leaking oil wh- or gas or something. But it was in the middle of road work. So they couldn't pull them off. It oh was like my! Barricade on both sides. It's, it's it was like, like the, the perfect storm. Yeah, like the biggest of clusters. So if you're possible. Possible. And I didn't get mad till like two hours in, then I was like, "All right, pissed." <laughs> <laughs> like, for sure. Pissed. It, it was it just like you like you weren't mad. It was like instant flop. You were like, "I'm not mad." And then yeah. a second pass, you're like, "I right, I'm mad." Yeah, because I kept seeing people get out of their cars. You know, people were like, "You're so nosy." Yeah. Sit back in your car. <laughs> oh yeah. So like everybody was getting out, and then I was like, "Now for real, what's going on?" So like <laughs> I stood up and I was like, "All right, it's time. Like we got to go." And then every five minutes, it was me bitching. Oh, my God. What part of, uh, where was this at exactly? Like 30 minutes outside of Allentown. Outside of Ooh. Allentown. Oh, my yeah. God. So you're on. 78. 78. Oh, my God. So you're just in the middle of the highway. Oh, I think I know exactly where you're talking about, where the construction is. Yep. yep. Oh, God. That's awful. It was, it was terrible. So then we, by the time we started moving, literally everybody just left. The, the show. Yeah, because oh, we were, like, keeping them, like, updated. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that was that, but. Yeah, so we, it was great. It was wonderful. Like, literally no complaints about this weekend bender at all. No. No. No, no. Sick. All, all right. Cool. I'm glad to hear that, man. That's fucking awesome. Good for you guys. <laughs> the, so, show, the show Saturday was really cool, though. Where'd you play it Saturday? Long Island. Long Island? Yeah. New Yo. Jersey? Or New, New York. New York, I guess. How was that? Because I know- It was good. Th- it was at a bar that had like a venue attached to it. It was like really small. It was kind of like intimate. But I yeah, kind of told cool. Kurt, I was like, for sure, like New York was going to eat up back to life. Oh, like, wait. The New York, right. Yeah. New York scene. About that, yeah, man. it was good. And uh, a lot more people than I thought there would be. Because it was like- I don't know. I haven't been out that way in a really long time. So, like, I don't know. It was it was good. I've been to New York, like, four times. And I'm, like, the one time I was there, I, like, got completely confused on the subway. I was like, oh, yeah, like, I knew the address of, like, where my hotel was. And I totally forgot there was, like, an east and a west side. And <laughs> I went to, like, apparently we were, like, on the east side or I was on the west side, one or the other. But I went to the opposite one that I was supposed to go to. Mm-hmm. And we got out of the subway terminal and I was just like... I know I've never been here before, and I know it's nighttime now, but, like, I'm pretty sure this is not where I'm supposed to be. 
and like it was like me and my girlfriend at the time, and it's like just us, and then it's like it's like one o'clock in the morning because we were there for a concert. Bad time. It was it was a bad time. Like there was, uh, I just started seeing a bunch of people like in red, and what? I was like. Okay, I was like, we're going back down in the subway. <laughs> like, I was like, this is not where we're supposed to be. Dude, New York it was City is not good. Awful with that. Like, oh my god, I've terrible. actually never been to New York City. I, I've been to Schenectady, and that's it. I think we talked. Maybe I don't know. If we we just said it was fun know. to say the last time we talked. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Schenect- yeah. yeah Schenectady. 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 I don't know. You're not missing much. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. It's just. Wait, so you played in New York City though? Like, no, Long Island's like. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, Long. God damn. <clears> so like, you like drive awful. through? We drove through the Bronx. Like it was like north of Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Forgive me. <laughs> and then it was why like, don't you know your geography? Yeah, right. And then you cross <laughs> over, and then there's like a. It basically like goes out like the tip. Like you're surrounded by the ocean. Yeah. Okay. That's like where like the Hamptons and shit are. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. The really rich people. Isn't uh, you know, never mind. I was gonna say isn't JFK around there, but I don't actually I think that's know. In the city, I don't. I don't I'm know. actually not sure. Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah, I just I don't, I don't know. New York like borders us, and I just have never really had any reason to go up there other than to visit my buddy Marcus. So I. Oh. Yeah, I, don't know I like the city. Been. I just don't like it at one o'clock in the morning when I don't know where I'm at. Speaking of like public transportation, like anytime you go like on a train or a plane or anything like that, mm-hmm. does anybody else get like that completely irrational anxiety in your head whenever you're like going through security and you're like, but wait, I don't do drugs, but what if there's drugs in my bag, dude? <laughs> like, every, what if somebody slipped drugs in my bag? <laughs> every single time I go to buy a gun, I have that like. That like fear because you fill out the application. It's like, have you ever been convicted of a f- convicted of a felony? And I'm like, have I ever been convicted? Of a-? And it's like, no, like, dude, you're in the military. Like, you have a clearance. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I have to like pep talk myself. Like, dude, you're fine. And I it's know. Like, it's like the dumbest shit. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Last time I went to buy a gun, the same, not that same thought, but I was like, what if I find out I'm wanted for something I didn't even know about? Do yeah. I have heroin in my ass? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I'm They'll pretty find sure. That shit out too. They know. <laughs> they fucking know. Oh yeah, they'll dig up in there. They know Cavity search. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, not to uh, rabbit hole. Um, back to you. So back to life. Uh, when's your next tour? Or do you guys have one? Anything planned yet? Or anything? No, we no. don't have anything. I mean, well, you just literally came off one, so that's. <laughs> Probably yeah. should have been expected. We have two shows coming up. Nice. That's it. All One, right. Next Tuesday at H Mac with King Eight Ten. Okay. And then I lied. Three shows. There's one in you son of a bitch. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> so there's one in March in like Scranton, Homesdale area, something like that, at a house. And then some show that Kurt booked in DC. I have n- I know nothing about. It. I don't know who's playing when it is. Dude, Jeremy. DC's gonna love hey, it. Give <laughs> us the dates. What dates? Next Tuesday. Is February Saturday. 11th is next Tuesday. March 7th, I think it is. And you couldn't pay me any amount of money to find out when that DC show is. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> That's fair. Thank you, Hunter, for the uh, input, because that was, that was crucial, actually. Yeah. I'm glad you thought of that, because I did not. I just not. wanted some clarification. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. So, on the other end, though, because <clears throat> I know you, you do play shows with Back to Life, but then Numbskull, I mean, I me and you talked a little bit on Facebook, which, dude, n- I, I love Back to Life. I love Kurt. I love you guys. I love just that whole sound. I, I never played in a band like that, so it's like it's always awesome to see, like, your friends, like, in other bands that are, like, a completely different style than you can do, and it's like, and then they're just killing it, and I'm like, yes. But, like, Numbskull, though, you showed me some of that shit, and I was like, yo, I fuck with this shit hard, and you're like, yeah, dude, we have, like, a whole album worth uh, and we uh, never played a show, so like, why is that? Because like, yo, Numbskull, if you are listening, is so fucking good. I don't know, just never did. <laughs> I don't. It, it's like the uh, best answer ever. Well, it's kind of like a long distance thing. Uh, I grew up in like my teenage years in Delaware, so I met people down there, and my buddy, my best friend, uh, still lives there, uh, Justin. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he had he started the project under a different name, him and my other friend. And they had a hard time with members and stuff, and they took a break. They had a they had that probably the one you listened to mm-hmm. that record recorded. Didn't do anything with it, and then we just decided it was like, hey, like let's just do it again. Let's re-record it. I'll record it, and let's just do it like together, like us three. So that ended up being we did that. Still didn't do anything with it because we couldn't find a drummer, and then so it's all MIDI and like pre-pro. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, like it's on Bandcamp. It's a full production, but I mean, like I, I programmed. You everything. programmed all the drums. Yeah. So then we, just basically were like, hey, let's write another album, just cause. <laughs> just 
So we, yeah, so like right now we have like ten more songs, and then the other guitar player Donovan just has like video, like video. Everybody has videos on their phone of like oh yeah noises that a song would be yeah. Like I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. There's hundreds. <laughs> You're like yo, play the guitar like this, and exactly. the guitarist is like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. But it's just like hundreds of voice memos. Oh it's like, so it's entirely like, what Tenacious D is. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like twenty more songs. Oh my god. So it's just like we could put out what uh, we could put out a discography in one release. But like we're not going to do that just cuz we don't Bruh, do anything. I'm calling it right now. Numskull is going to just be like they're cuz they're all about this like, "Hey, do you want to do this?" Yeah, sure. Why not? Just because it's one of your bandmates is going to be like, "Hey, dude, you want to submit this to like Fearless or like whatever?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure. Why not?" You guys will. And they're going to be like out of nowhere, never played a local show. There's going to be like signed to like a major label and they're gonna just be like second tier underneath abr like on a fucking no like, <laughs> like, but like they're just gonna blow the fuck up out of nowhere and i'm like yo i don't think that would end. we Wait. had them on our fucking podcast so what uh what genre is numbskull it's like, like uh alternative rock <clears throat> it's not very heavy it's just like it's just so entirely good entirely singing basically except for a couple like parts where there's like a little bit of screaming okay but it just has it has from what i've listened to because you sent me uh a link to the ep like, I didn't get to listen to all of it, but, like, it has, like, a lot of dark undertones, though, which is, like, awesome. Very, very emotional. Yeah. The instrumental, like, if I can paint a picture of anyone, the instrumental sounds very upbeat for the most part. Like, not super upbeat. It's not, like, all-time low, but it's, like, the hey. instrumental is definitely uh, more upbeat, but, like, just, like, the tone and the emotion and the lyrics is, like, it's definitely darker and heavier, but, like, I, that contrast is so good, and mm. that's why I fucked with it so hard. So, like... Why is like where do you guys draw your inspiration from? But I mean, we can talk about numbskulls since we're talking about that. But we can also go back to back to life. Um, but like, where do you guys life. draw your inspiration from? Different places for both bands, but numbskull is essentially like Justin is essentially numbskull. Mm-hmm. So like everything that you hear on the EP and everything lyric wise, vocal wise, on anything that we're ever gonna do whether it comes out or not, if I just send it to you, that's going to be, like, his masterpiece. Okay. And so, like, and, and he's always been good at that, just, like, structuring and the things that he does. I mean, like, it's just, like, a different caliber of musician than than I even am. And I don't... He listens to... Fuck. <laughs> Everything that's, like, pop-punk alternative stuff. Okay. You know, yeah. like, Turnover, Super Heaven, that kind of... Stuff like that. No, so we're not even like talking like Dance Gavin Dance or like Amorosa. We're talking like, uh, like more like poppier yeah, than like, that. I don't know. The new Amorosa album is pretty fucking poppy, but yeah, I like just it. It's like alternative emo. I guess it's okay. technically. Yeah. It's like a heavier pop punk. I album. haven't actually had the opportunity to listen to Numbskull yet, and I, I'm really excited to listen to it now. Oh, yeah. So I sent a sound clip. You, right? you oh, did, oh yeah, that's right. We do have sound clips. So. Yeah. There'll that's be samples. Yeah. yeah you, guys, samples. you guys will be hearing it. Don't worry. So, Oh, and as far as Back to Life. Yeah, like I said, uh, Numbs- two two different yeah, inspirations. Yeah, it's a different like uh, like Numbskull is Justin. Back to Life is CJ. Okay, that's CJ's monster basically. And uh, before I ever played, him and Kurt decided that they were going to do that, and they asked me to play. And I think at, right around the same time, like Aborns broke up, so me and Keen just joined because we were like a pair. Mm-hmm. So we started playing and. Um, basically, I guess like the inspiration for Back to Life would just be you know anything like hardcore. I don't know. CJ listens to tons of hardcore stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, like that aspect of like hardcore. Like I'm, I don't listen to a whole lot of it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm mm-hmm. just like a metalcore guy. Yeah, but like I don't know, like backtrack, bench press. I mean, they're from around here. Yeah, I mean you know, stuff like that. It's just and then and then as far as like what we've done recently. We've kind of transitioned from like the old hardcore sound to more of like a hardcore metalcore, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. playing breakdowns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I was always, I mean, personally, I was always more of like a metalcore, metalcore fan myself, mm-hmm. and but like always been a hardcore fan as well. More metalcore, I just think hardcore more so as it's times. Like I can listen to metalcore all day. I can't listen to hardcore all day. Speaking of metalcore, though, like, so I know we started this in- podcast off on like beers. a super positive note, but like. Today is actually like a really sad day because, unfortunately, today we fi- we found out that Diego, uh, f- uh, I don't want to mispronounce his last name, but it's uh, Far- Farius. Farius, uh, Volumes, uh, the ex-guitarist of Volumes, he just 
passed away today. Um, mm. the cause of death is still not known, um, but I mean, volumes made a statement about it. Um, like I literally just like opened Facebook today, and just my entire feed was just blowing up about that and like that really sucks like v- like you're talking about like metalcore and everything and like they're definitely like they're prog metalcore for sure mm-hmm. but like they are for sure like their album via is like we were talking about this actually earlier forever will be one of the top albums like of my life like th- it was so good yeah and you you knew diego on a personal level is diego, that correct way back you know before they were they became really really big as a band, but yeah. Before they were like really wormholes is what gave them like their like big right. break, right? So even before that, they had an EP called "The Concept of Dreaming," and you know he produced that, and I knew, always knew that he was a producer, and he did everything that they ever released. I mean, except for I think they just put out a song the other day, but I don't think. Oh, like Holy he Water. Did. Yes, I yeah. don't think he did that, but uh, I don't know, they were still playing like small venue shows, and like you know my band would play and stuff like that, and you know they weren't like. A bigger stature then so like you you know you get to talking to people and stuff like that and you know i was friends with him on facebook and stuff like that and yeah you just talk to him throughout the years i mean it's not like we were best friends like i just talked to him here and there but I mean, yeah he was always a really nice guy and a huge inspiration to me no oh, dude yeah. he was Musically. he's incredible volumes was one of those bands that could just be an inspiration to anybody because they just had so many different not not that they had so many different sounds but just the band that they were all had I don't want to say all. I want to say it all had the same sound, not in a negative way, in the most positive way. But they just had so many different ways of manipulating sound and making it into like a heavier sound because they were very uh, metallic at some points, even. Yeah. And like it was just really neat to see them. I don't want to say. I kind of want to say they almost brought that into metalcore. I guess you know. One thing that I definitely would say that Volumes did for me, and like Volumes is the reason why I developed this love for it, is so. If you, you know, if any of our listeners listen to volumes, they know like how like heavy, chuggy it is. It's it kind of like ironic actually because a lot of for whatever reason you had like bands like Mashugana and some of that like actual Mashugna. true gent metal, and for whatever reason when volumes like popped off, everyone associated volumes to gent metal and they're they're not they're not gent metal but it like really brought like a huge light onto gent metal. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it could be a little. I mean, it's it's a little genty, but it's definitely prog metalcore more yeah. than it is gent for sure. Magenta. Um, but uh, one of the things that they did, and I never heard it until I started listening to volumes, was they brought that like uh that ambiance, like background music. Like mm-hmm. they would do such soft shit, like, like uh, across the bed and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like where it just starts off with like beautiful piano, edge of the earth, edge of the earth, and then it's yeah, like, yeah. and then just the fucking fade in, and it's like. Like, dude, it just, it's, it just gets so heavy. Oh, my God. That shit made me fall in love with, like, that soft, beautiful ambiance in the mm-hmm. background of metal music. And from that and point on... you see that a lot more now, too. Yeah, you do. And it, cause it fits. Yeah, I think they kind of paved the way for that, honestly. That's kind of what I... I guess yeah. I, that's probably the better way to word what I was trying yeah. to say a minute ago. Is they paved the way for a lot of people. They, I, would, I don't want to say they were genre-defining, but they were definitely... Because like there was definitely bands out there that were doing what they were doing, but they definitely brought a lot of attention to that style for sure. They made the two vocalist thing a thing, though. Oh, uh, for yeah. sure. Having I would, two vocalists was like I w- almost I, not a thing before that. I would say the only other band that did that. Oh, are you talking straight screamers though? Just two different screamers, or just straight two vocalists? Because I would say "Woe Is two, Me" like, definitely brought yeah, was attention to that. that. Well, I mean, right. you also had like Under Oath and even I think Show like, back in the day. Two front men though. Yeah, was, yeah, like, exactly. Just straight vocalists. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I think you're right. I think volumes and woe is me are probably the two that brought. They, they both that. started around the same time, didn't they? Like 2010. Volumes definitely technically started before woe is me. Woe is me just blew up way quicker than was, volumes yeah. because of Tyler Carter. Yeah. I think woe is me was a different band before that too. Well, no, 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 no. Um, it was um. The drummer was in um. Uh, I, I can picture the album cover. Is right that now. drummer doing anything? Does anybody know? Because he was like super good. He was, but he was super cocky. Yeah. Well, and then that that was a big reason why what was me broke up, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. But what was me was Tyler Carter and that drummer. I don't remember his name. I, I want to say it's Caleb. I, I want to say, say his Caleb last name's well. Caleb or his first name's Caleb, but I can't remember his last name. Yeah. It was it was him. 
It was him. Uh, it was Tyler Carter, that drummer, and the keyboardist, the redheaded keyboardist, which which a lot of people don't know. All those deep, low screams that everyone fucking loved on What Was Me. Everyone's like, oh, Michael Bone is so good. No, he's not. I have my own personal issues with Michael. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> um, I, I have personal oh, things. Oh, you did him. tell me about that. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, all that awesome, dope screaming that you heard, that was the keyboardist. Yeah. That was the redheaded keyboardist, and he was actually really good. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's besides the point. But yeah, no. Um, I can't remember the name of the band that he one was in. The last thing I do want to say about What Was Me, one of my, f- it was something that we need again is, mm-hmm. A few is a feud again, like what was me and issues because that oh shit. Oh my god! That- when that came out in 2012, when they were releasing like Vengeance and King mm-hmm. of Am- Amarillo, Genesis, Genesis, uh, yeah, that shit was. It was exciting because it was like gave you something more. Because, but do you think that was real or do you think that was just a straight marketing scheme? Because uh, that was anymore. perfect. When they're doing uh, lyrics like uh, "It's hard to talk shit with a dick in your throat," uh, it's kind of that's a valid point. I don't know if I if you can really call that faking it. I don't know. Yeah, that's a valid point. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yeah. But you never know, I guess. I don't. It's like it's like, nah, dude. Just like we're, we're gonna get rich off this. Like, just don't don't pull any punches. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, dude. I wrote this really awesome thing. It's like with about like a dick in your throat. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, no one will ever think that that's like fake. Just do it. <laughs> just go for it, man. It's we just real made hateful. millions. Real hateful. Well, it's the same thing as our two deep throat by Amir. That's uh, a valid yeah. point towards Acacia Strain. Look, yeah. Amir yeah. just had a lot of weird shit too, though. I mean, like. Doug, drug dealer's friend, the lyrics, like the chorus of that. That's is... about their guitar player. That was about Amir's own guitar player. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. How did was, I not know that? It was like Frankie and him fucked the same girl. Oh, shit. I did not That's know. How did I not know that? Why did they not have a song called Eskimo Brothers? Like, at this point, they should. But hey, um, not to cut things short, let's just take a quick break yeah. and we'll uh, we'll be right back. And we're back. Jeremy Jones Audio. That's something you're doing now. Tell us a little bit about that. So, 2016 uh, is essentially when Abhorrence broke up. I had more free time. And it's something that I always wanted to pursue. I don't know. Even when I was younger, like in my car or whatever, you know, I'm always... You had your turntable sitting on your lap and you were just mixing in your car? absolutely. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I had Pro Tools in my car. (laughs) No, but uh, sick. No, like I'm like tweaking the EQ in my car to like make the song sound better. You know, when I like my rig, my guitar rig, I'm always doing stuff to just you know, like I always it was always about getting that right sound, yeah, and creating something like different and like you wanted it to sound the best. Mm -hmm. So, and in production is just creating audio, yeah. So, I mean, and that was something that I was always interested in. And like before I had the gear, it was like garage band record myself doing this and then take it somewhere else and let somebody else record it for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I eventually had the resources to do it. Uh, one of my buddies was like, hey, I want to get into this. You know, would you be down to do it with me? And uh, <coughs> he actually bought a computer. He, I should, hang on. Yeah, I'm just not going to say the computer, but he bought a computer. <laughs> copyright. <laughs> copyright. Uh, yeah, so he bought a computer and a monitor and then just like some little speakers. And then, you know, we started... You know, getting all the stuff and spending way too much money on the stuff to you know, <laughs> sounds familiar. Expensive. Yeah, weird. <laughs> and then you know, he eventually was just a guy like you know he didn't have the time for it, and you know, so I was basically just using his gear. Then and then I got to the point where I could get all my own stuff, so I gave him all his stuff back, and then it's just me building my own setup, and and I didn't record my first band until. Uh, probably earlier the next year or something like that, I wanted to have like a little bit under my belt mm-hmm. as far as you know, recording myself, recording people I know for free, and yeah, and then from there it was you know me plugging myself on Facebook and stuff like that, and trying to get people and you know to come. You know, I just do it out of my house, so it's nothing like crazy. I don't have dude. That's some of the best shit though, because like I mean, we when I was in ethics, like we went to when we recorded one of our singles, we went. um to a guy named Paul, um, and he records out of Williamsport. And like I remember, like when we got there, I love Paul. Yeah, Paul. Paul's great. Oh, um, Paul. and shout I remember when Paul. I <laughs> shout out Paul. Um, I remember when I got there, I was like, "What the fuck are we doing here? Like, why did we agree to this? Because it's like it's a second story apartment, yeah. and it was like it was like an old school style house. And I was like, "Bro, what is this?" And like we walked into his living room, which is where his setup is, 
and he has his computer there and like then there's the mic stand with like the like the audio screens around it just right there and like he's sitting like two feet from me and he's like yeah so uh start screaming and i'm like no like this is so (laughs) awkward I'm not going to lie to you. It's like one of the best recordings we ever had. That's actually when we recorded Devoid. So all the audio that you hear on the music video and like when you listen to it on Apple Music, that was all him. It was incredible. Paul's a great guy. <clears throat> he recorded all the um, Numbskull vocals for that. Really? Yes, yeah. Fuck, dude. Paul's so fucking good. He doesn't and, do it that much anymore, and I wish he would because he's really good. I noticed that. Like I noticed he kind of like backed off recently. But yeah, dude. Oh, my God. He's so good. Um, but yeah, no, that's, I actually, now that I had that, like, to touch base, what you were talking about, like, the fact that you record out of your house, like, if I walked into that, like, I would actually feel, like, a lot more comfortable. So I hope other bands, like, definitely can yeah, see that and appreciate that. Well, it's definitely a different aspect, too, and, uh, you know, and a lot of the people that I work with, it's just, like, uh, the connections that I make at, like, shows, and, you know, I've been doing this for, I don't know how long, I've been playing shows for 15 years, or sure. whatever, you know, so, like. I'm, like, at you, 11. <laughs> So you meet people and then like, you know, say like, now that I'm doing this, I'm like, hey, like, you know, if you ever need this done, you know, let me know. And then it turns into you do one person and they shout you out and then you get more and more. And then basically like now I'm not looking so much as far as like new people to work with. I'm just looking to like, I mean, I'm always looking for new people to work with. So (laughs) (laughs) wait, no, but right here. here. So (laughs) it's and like it helps me like when people do one thing and then they like it. And then they're like, oh, well, let's do this next. So it's like uh, the repeat work is great. Yeah. So like, and, you know, and I like doing that too. You get more comfortable with people. Uh, they open up more. But yeah, the fact that it's in my house, I mean, like, obviously it's not ideal. Like, I would love to have like a studio. I was just like, going to ask, like, cause, like, I know you're married. You have a son. Yes. Like, how <laughs> does your, uh, does your wife like ever get pissed when you like have a band come in and you're like, Hey babe, so today's the vocals tracking, so you're gonna hear a lot of random screaming. Like, is she like okay with that? Does she just like go do her own thing? She's usually yeah, she's really good with it. And uh, you know, for the most part, I schedule it like far out. Like, it's not like if you hit me up and you're like, hey, I want to record this weekend. I'm like, uh, well, like, let's let's wait a little bit. <laughs> so like, we plan it out so like you know she can do whatever she wants to do. And but like for the most part, like with the door shut or you know if it's people that like we know and stuff like that door open my son comes in he loves hearing the music and stuff like that i was just gonna ask that like how how much he loves loves that he loves it so you know obviously he can't be in the room like when we're doing vocals because it's got to be quiet yeah but like all the other aspects and stuff like that it's like doors open him in dogs in she comes over she never needs anything and it's like i don't know it's relaxed and like i feel like it makes people comfortable as far as like you're not just like in a high pressure environment oh yeah yeah it has to be like somewhat intimidating to record in a, like a professional studio it is it yeah. is for sure but uh yeah she's great with it and you know i couldn't ask for anything better as far as like how much she like lets me do it because it's too much probably <laughs> so <laughs> like you know and as long as i'm like ahead of time like hey i'm gonna do this here and she's like all right, all right. <laughs> but like the money's good too, so she can't complain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> pays for some uh, some things around the house. Right, you know, it keeps Who the lights love on. Extra money. Yeah, exactly. Right. Do you ever use like the recording? You're like, hey, babe. So this band's about to come on. Like, uh, they're gonna record. We we love that because you know they're gonna pay us really well. But like, it it would probably sound better if I bought you know like this specific guitar or like this specific interface like it would just it would really help us like don't, do you ever use that like as like a crutch of course I do don't fucking, <laughs> don't sell them out his wife's probably gonna watch this come on ah, okay. <laughs> Shit. she knows it yeah, it happens true. well I mean like and that's like the point of it too like we people start paying you more and more you make more money then it's like you can afford the stuff that's better yeah and then in turn I guess theoretically your stuff is sounds good because of how you make it but like Gear is gear. I mean, oh like, for sure, gear is gonna make you sound better. You can't do it with, you know, shit. Yeah, so. like you're not you're not gonna fucking make a track that sounds just as good as going to like Atrium, right? Using strictly Garage Band, correct? Like yeah, it's I mean, not gonna happen. You're not gonna record a album with a first act guitar and Audacity <laughs> and you know no. have it sound like it's on Pro Tools with a Gibson. You know, it's, right? It's a little. Different. And I use that line all the time. Like, oh, like you know, I made X amount of dollars for this. Like, I really want to buy this. You know, but we'll use the other stuff. For this and that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it comes out good, like because you know, there's times where I don't need anything, and it's like, oh, I could put this in our savings account, or I can, you know, buy this that we wanted and stuff like that. And for it, sure, and it works out great. And then, you know, the more songs you do, the more time it takes me, the more money you pay me. 
So no. is this something that you do full time now? Is this how you make your no no no, no. okay? So uh, I mean my point to that was like so you're in two bands, you do your own recording, mm-hmm. like you own your own studio and your own company doing that technically technically is in it my, an LLC it's in my house no no Shh. okay yeah it is <laughs> sick um like, how I do you Texas. how do you manage all of all of that like, it's, like you're married like how do you manage all of your time like like, how, like if anyone else that's you're listening like a to metal us, elon musk yeah like for <laughs> real like how, what advice could you give to people that are like that have been in the same situation or like they want to aspire to do the same things that you're doing like what advice could you give them well obviously the first rule is always make your significant other happy happy wife happy life right so you know i don't do it all the time because like you know, I still want to have weekends where I spend time with my family. Yeah. And, like, so there's times, like, where, like, if I know she's going away, hey, I can use that weekend to do that. Mm-hmm. Or I can use that week to do that. Because she's a stay-at-home mom, so, like, she can afford to, like, go places, like, during the week. Like, she doesn't have to worry about, like, a work schedule. Yeah. <clears throat> but as far as, like, the way I manage it is do two people a month or something like that and stagger the time out. You know, if they can come on weeknights or something like that after I get off work. Hey, come lay this down, you know, so it's not like they're there all day long. So, like, when they're there all day long, it's like I'm over there the whole time. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, my son can come over and do this and that, but it's like I'm not spending time with them. Yeah. So, But, like, as much as I can, I try to, you know, stagger it so that, um, you know, I have the time to spend with them. And as far as the bands, obviously, Numbskull doesn't do a whole lot. We record it when I get extra time. Yeah. I never have enough time to do it <laughs> there's not enough hours in the day and back to life it's you know we have a show come up we make sure it's you know far enough in advance so we get that you know scheduled yeah i don't plan anything around it as far as just like staggering the recordings it's you know whenever people can do it i give them my availability they kind of fit into that and you know, i make sure that i don't overstimulate myself and overstimulate her and my son yeah, you know, because he he he's two, so you know, any time that I'm away or any time that I'm in there with like the door closed, he doesn't understand that, and it's like not yeah. fair to him that I'm like if I'm always doing it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like, for me to like space it out is good for him too, because he can like have time with me. Of course, as, and I work a lot already, so it's like I want to have those times like where I come home and oh for I sure, can just yeah, be yeah. with them. And to touch on overstimulation, like that is that's a real thing that nobody actually talks about enough with. Being in a band, like just a band as like a, a side hobby, that's, or if you want to call it a hobby, a career, whatever it is, even if it is a hobby or a career, I'm sorry, is a better way to word that. Mm-hmm. And then having just a full time job and a family at home is enough. I mean, you still have a house to manage and take care of. Yeah. I know, for instance, like my personal life, my three things I have focused on is work, the podcast, and just going to the gym because I'm trying to get myself healthy again. And it's mm-hmm. like, I, I'm already out of hours a day. We just had a meeting the other day, and it's it's. Yeah, I'm like, guys, I need to talk to you guys about how I need to manage my time, and make sure it works out for the podcast. <laughs> you did, and yeah. You else. were literally like, hey, this is how I'm scheduling my life, and I was like, <laughs> okay, I like, I, all it, right, yeah. And but like, it's because I I was even running into issues with overstimulating myself, where I was just I, I I just I didn't think I was performing well at everything I did in life. And after like sitting down and focusing on that and figuring that out. I'm already feeling a lot better this week, yeah. but I mean, on top of that, you're doing so much more than even what I'm doing, and I'm like, dude, that's amazing, and now yeah. you even found time to come on our show. Dude, thank you so much. Absolutely. That's it's amazing. Fun. Holy <laughs> shit. And I'm, I'm like a firm believer in like everything that you do, no matter if it comes to work or like doing what I do, band stuff, production, anything, anything you do. Taking a break is like absolutely necessary. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, so, like, for sure. Because I work, skip, in, yeah. I work okay. in sales outside of here, and it's like- you can get burnt out and any sales job will tell you like, Hey, you need to take at least one vacation a year, even if it's just a prolonged v- weekend or something like that. Cause you can burn. Great. Yeah. Even a staycation. Exactly. I love Only problem with staycations and sales is you just always end up working. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's just, you will overstimulate yourself. You'll burn yourself out. And next thing you know, you're just not performing. And well, it's yeah. just, yeah. And yeah. how that relates to me too is like, if I'm recording a band, and they just want to keep like hammering the you know, like oh let's do this let's do this and it's like back to back it's like take a break every two hours or something like that mm-hmm. just let them go smoke a cigarette or go get something to eat and stuff like that I'll literally just go over to my bed and I'll lay down mm-hmm. and it's like just I relax n- I need that yeah. and also my ears need that oh like, for sure because yeah. I'm working with my ears and like and at work too like I don't per- I don't protect myself enough as far as like I work in a loud environment sometimes and 
you know, I don't wear ear protection as much as I should, but like, and that affects me like when I work all day, come home, and then I have to like mix a song. Yeah. yeah. So that's like hard for me. For sure. So, but like taking a break is necessary. So like, I'll take, you know, there'll be times where I don't touch my computer for a week, two weeks, and then like when I have to prepare for something, yeah, you know, I'll start like doing it again, and then I'll do it for a week or two, or, and then whenever I get free time and stuff like that, and. It's important to take breaks, and what I find myself doing is I'll wake up, like, I have to be at work at 7 every day. Mm-hmm. I'll wake up at 5, I'll go over, and I'll mix in the morning before work. Wow. Um, and so, and I'll wake up, I'll be over there at 5, got my tea, got a snack, <laughs> and I'm just chilling. <laughs> got a oh, crumpet. Yeah. yeah. It Half is the time I want to just go back to bed, but I know I need to do it. It is nice getting up extra early in the morning, though, sometimes. I'm, I've been trying to get back into it. I was doing it for a while. It's nice. It makes your day just, like, I don't know, I feel more productive when I'm, like, up for two hours, and I'm like, okay, I gotta go to work now. You feel more awake. You I guys are for sure. fucking insane. What? No way. Uh, what see, time I, do you, what time waking do you go to up, bed? waking up early has never felt better for me, ever. Dude, so I'm I, telling what, you, tried a couple times. So what time do you work? In the, I, I have to be in my office in uniform at seven in the morning. Yep. So I, what time I, do you go to bed? I'm usually in bed by like <laughs> nine, nine thirty. Oh, see, that's great. It's great, but like, I could easily sleep. For so long, like see, I can't. Really? Yeah. Like I can't sleep like I used to when I was a teenager. Like by any means, yeah. like I can't be like, oh, I'm gonna sleep until twelve. Can't do that. Like I'll I'll wake up at, like eight thirty at the absolute how much latest. I the night before. Yeah, I sleep <laughs> six to like eight hours most. <sighs> and like the days that I want to get up and mix. But see, like I me, I, go to bed a little. If I knew I had to, like, I I guess that's the difference between like doing something you love. Like, not that I don't love my job in the Air Force. Like I do. I love my career field and everything. But it's it's totally different. Like if I could wake up. And like do stuff for the podcast, like, like this was our full time gig. Oh my god, maybe I would like be like, oh, I'll get up early and I'll I'll do I'll do some stuff. But like, it's not the only thing. Like we have so that. You're saying you don't love it as much as this <laughs> is what you're saying. Uh, come on, Alan. Listen, we need you Uncle, dedicated. Guys, shout out to the military. <laughs> <laughs> god damn it! I'm sorry, Uncle Sam. Even like back in like October though, because that was like back when I had my sleep schedule on lock. And I mean, I wasn't even doing anything in the morning. I would literally. I don't have to be at work until 8, so I'd get up at 6 o'clock, make myself a cup of coffee, get a shower, and then finish my coffee and just sit there and watch the news at, like, right. 7 o'clock in the morning. And, and it just, feels good, right? It does, yeah. You're just like, man, this is great. I'm seeing what's going on in the world. My mind is waking up because there's a difference between your body and your mind waking up. Yeah. Like, where you mm-hmm. actually wake up is when your mind wakes up. And if you get up and you get to work within that same hour, your mind's not going to wake up for another hour or even two after that. And it's detrimental, too, like... I used to set multiple alarms for like ten minutes apart. That's really bad for your Awful. like for your brain. I stopped doing that recently. Yeah, um, like you don't get back into that deep. I feel sleep personally mind. attacked right now. No, dude, I'm so, telling you, you wake gotta, up when you need Alan, to wake I up. I feel you. I'm, yeah, I'm in the same boat. Now, yeah. to be fair, it is hard to do. To, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, it's hard to break that. It's it, it's it like, is hard to break that, and on top of that, it's kind of sketchy to do if you live alone. Like my brother lived, or my brother and I lived together. So, mm-hmm. like whenever I started training myself to do that, I'd be like, hey. My alarm set for this time. My brother's a lot better at waking up in the morning than I am. So I'm like, if I'm not up, wake me up. He had to do it like maybe once or twice, and then Somebody I just started check doing you. It. Yeah. See, I, my we my argument other. is, and maybe I'm the psychopath on this one. I like so I don't do this anymore, but I used to do this, where I would set an alarm. I would set an alarm for like 3 a.m. when I had to be up at like five, and I'd go to bed at like normal time. But I did that because like the alarm would go off, and you wake up, and you're like, "Fuck, I have to be awake." And then you roll up, and you're like, "Oh no, it's three o'clock." I still get to go back to sleep. So you get that yeah, that sensation of going back to so sleep, and I love body, it. Though. Is it really? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Because yeah, like you're fucking up your REM cycles. Yeah, and there's a part in there's a part in your sleep like when you first fall asleep, you're not in a deep sleep, but then there's a portion of your sleep where you're 100% in a deep sleep. So like you wake up, you might go back to sleep, but you're just like barely asleep. That's why, like if you ever notice like when you try to go back to sleep, then you wake up like every like five minutes. It's because you're barely asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're like, speaking logic right now, and I don't like it. <laughs> it's kind of like Sorry. if, if like, you ever realize whenever you get drunk and you still get, like, a full 8 to 12 hours of sleep, you still feel feel tired the next day. It's because the alcohol didn't let your body sleep in, or slip into a deep sleep. Oh, yeah. It's, I, I did know that because your body's, like, constantly throughout the night, your liver's processing all the alcohol. Exactly. So, so it's still working. Same thing, like, if you eat, like, a shit ton before bed. Yeah, and that's why, you, yeah. Your you, body's working. Look, guys. And I'm attacking you again because you probably eat a fuck ton before you go to sleep. I don't eat a. F- I actually don't eat a fuck ton anymore at I know all. You like, do. You're skinny as hell. 
Thank you. <laughs> Looking <laughs> mighty slender with that towel. Um, but so I do want to touch ba- base on uh, your recording, though, because this is always like an interesting story. What is your... Uh, <laughs> do you have any funny or worst like recording? Is, like, Do you have like any instances where you're like, God fucking damn it. Like, because we definitely did when we recorded. We had a situation where that happened, and I was just like... We, we had to kick someone out in the middle of recording. I mean, as far as like other people goofing or like yeah. yourself goofing? Ah, other people goofing. Like, whichever one's better, honestly. We'll do both. Well, we as got far time. as like me, yeah, it only happened to me one time, but like you didn't not save. saving. Oh my, I knew so it. So now, like when I'm working, my fingers, like my save is command S. So my fingers are literally glued to the key. <laughs> so like, it's like record, watch them do a take, command S. I'm already glued to it. Every single take. There you go. I learned my lesson like, one uh, time. Like, I how much not, did you lose when you fucked time. up? Straight up, a couple songs. Uh, where they were like, bro, what? Like fully mixed and everything? No, it was like they were in the tracking phase, but it's like still gotta go back and do them all. And then they weren't happy. We lost all that time. Fuck. But as far as like other people coming and just like, I could say a lot of shit, but everybody's gonna know who I'm talking about if they're them. <laughs> so, all right, just like leave, like just general, like just give us general scenarios, because this is always fucking hilarious. You don't have to if you don't want. Yeah, to. you don't have to. If you don't want to. <laughs> but uh, I say, like in a general consensus, though. Yeah. People, I am always early to everything. I mean, I showed up a half hour early today. <laughs> you did. <clears throat> people that I work with, and I don't know if it's just like the caliber of like artists that I work with, because I I, mean, I get to work with like really good people as well. But and it's not everybody, but people are always late, and that bothers me. Especially like if I take a to- like if I take a day where I could have worked. Yeah, or I could have worked longer, and I'm taking time off, and then you show up five hours late. Hey, bro, five well, hours. I was thinking like 15, 20 minutes. Oh my god, five hours. That's so not okay. I will briefly tell a story, but he'll probably know who I'm talking about. So there was this band. <laughs> Maybe he'll never do it again. <sighs> I hope not. I really hope not. <laughs> okay, because the shit was fucking irritating. So it's like I'm you, already excited. You schedule a time to come record on a weekend, and I get it. Some people are like nocturnal, mm-hmm. can't sleep at night. Okay. You have commitments, stick to it. Yeah. So a band was coming from a decent like, distance away. I said, hey, be at the house. It's like such a relative distance. I'm sorry. Coming from D.C., distance away. Like, Are they from D.C. or are they just like I, relevant a, a to de- that distance I from D.C. to here? A decent distance away. Oh, okay. So okay. I mean like we're talking a couple hours. Okay. All right. All right. So it's like if I'm say like I said, be there at noon, which I usually start at like 10. Mm-hmm. I usually try to do like 10 to like 8. 10 to 10, whatever. I mean, a it's huge a whole, chunk of your weekend. Yeah, and it's a whole day. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'll be there at 10, be there at noon. I think I told them noon because they were coming from further away. Then it was like, I was. we were actually recording drums at somebody else's house. Okay. My friend John's, he has an actual studio. <clears throat> so I was like, yeah, be there at noon. And then, you know, texted them at noon. Hey, where you at? Hey, man, we're just leaving. I said, Okay. And Sick. In, in here, in my body, I'm fucking flaming. <laughs> I'm hot already. And then I said, okay, so now I'm just sitting here for the next couple hours because you didn't leave yet. And then they weren't going to be there for like three hours. So I was like, okay. Called them at three. Hey, man, we were running behind. Just leaving. Bruh. And I said, the fire's here now. I'm ready to fucking spew. And I said, if you don't get here, I said, honestly, there's no point in coming. But, I mean, you can come, do one, stay over, and then we'll try to do the next day. And it ended up being like they couldn't, they didn't make it till like nine. At night? Yeah. And I was like, turn the fuck around and go home. Because I'm pissed and <laughs> oh, this isn't working. My God. You know what we used God. to call that? We always used to call that band time. Like whenever we would do promotion, like, or do promotion for a show mm-hmm. and like somebody was running late they were running on band time well it's like <laughs> yeah if you have <laughs> commitments <laughs> just do it like you gotta like i and like i said okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> like uh chris just fucking I eats it and yeah. like, oh. <laughs> goodbye everything all the gear <laughs> <laughs> no but it's like if you have a commitment like i don't care what it is in life like maybe it's just me because i'm always like on time for everything, but it's like if you if you know you have Not to do something. Angels like you, Jeremy. Get, the, 
get there. Is yeah. what I'm saying. Well, no, and it's funny you said like nocturnal people. I I am one of those people. I have awful sleep problems, and like that's like I know earlier earlier when I was talking about getting my sleep scheduled down, like that was one of the first times in my life I ever had that. So my entire life, I've always been running behind because I'm fucking awful at sleeping. But right. you hit that like one hour mark where you know you're gonna be running like an hour late. Well, well I guess it depends on some things. Where it's like. You know you're going to be running 15 minutes late or an hour late for this with the two completely different things. It's like you just fucking cancel in your yeah. schedule. Yeah. Like, it, it, yeah, but you're talking like this was like eight, nine hours. Yeah, late. exactly. What well, I mean, like if I'm running five minutes late for my barber appointment, I'll text my barber and be like, D- dude, yes, I'm sorry, bad. I'm running yep. five so minutes late. Bad. Yeah, I do. I'll, well, I'll text Most them. of these people don't. Oh, see, yeah, no, I'll text I don't them. Get if, that. if I'm like, if I'm still possibly going to make it on time, but could still possibly be five minutes late, I'm like, hey, man. Uh, I'm going to be about five, ten, maybe ten minutes late. Do you want me to reschedule? I'll live until tomorrow. That's and professional etiquette. Exactly. Like it's, you're just like, uh, you're trying to be courteous because you know that dude's waiting on your time. Right. But like, yeah, I, like you said, like those, like, some people just don't care. Like, I don't fucking understand that. Like, if I'm paying for something. Some people don't understand that that's like a problem, though. They just like, they're like, oh, that's. Where were I they do. fucking born? Yeah, like, are they what, not what, what on earth? earth? Do they live on? Earth, you know, <laughs> it's just people that like you know they either like don't have jobs or they like work like third shift or something like that. But it's like musicians. You, well, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not. Like, I'm not trying to be that guy. Well, and I don't want to bash anybody. No, too, but it's like I don't know. That's all I'll say about that. But as far as like anything else that's like funny is like that when it comes to like recording phase <laughs> is like what I'll do is like when I set up and they're like, oh, well, let me warm up or. Even like in between songs or in between takes, you know, like the guys recording and then the bands on like the futon, they're just like, you know, chit chat and talking shit and stuff like that. Turn the mic on and record what they're talking about. Because nine <laughs> times out of ten, it's sexist, it's racist, <laughs> oh my or God. it's really fucking like embarrassing. So I have like literally just like, and sometimes I won't tell them. And I'll, just, <laughs> and I'll just have like files on my computer of like mad goofy shit and like, it's probably way too many, like way too many gigs on my computer. And dude's like, hey, oh. hey, man, like, have you ever like, did you, you ever woke up and your dick's in a knot? And he's like, what? Like, yeah. no, and then I'm just like sitting there, like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, got that, but I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> That's and, fucking great. And as far as and you know anything else, as far as just like you know, people recording, everybody's gonna fuck up a little bit. But recording people fucking up on vocals and then just saving it all, and I always drag. I have a, I'll set markers in my session. So it'd be like song one, song two, blah, blah, blah. And then like I'll set a marker at the very end, like way far out, number it, just call it graveyard. So like any time that there's like somebody records something and it's like really funny, we all goof about it, just drag it over there. And then when it's all done, it's like three minutes of like shitty takes. And it, it, I don't know, it's like really fun to like laugh at too. That's so, awesome actually. So like when I did Promise Breaker, I did all the vocals for Promise Breaker on their latest release. Yeah. It's like and me and Tyler like, <clears throat> worked really hard on that and we did a lot Dude, of Promise sessions. Promise Breaker's so fucking good too. Took a lot of sessions to do that and you know he would do like one song here two songs here you know anytime you come over and uh, but like his like reel of stuff was absolutely insane. And I have His graveyard just, reel? Yeah and I have it just like on my phone just <laughs> like it, like when I sent him I sent him like all the vocals like in like uh, folders for like all of his takes and there was just like one that he, he was like what's the graveyard folder? I said just open it. Because it's great, <laughs> you know. And it's just like, I don't know. But yeah, shout out to him because he's absolutely incredible at what he does. And oh, he really is I for sure. Get him on here soon. They yeah. need to get. Well, I was actually thinking about asking if he wanted to come with me, but I was maybe next time. Yeah, yeah. 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 We already exactly. we already said you're welcome to come back. Yeah, so and we can get some actually, stuff going with and him. Yeah, I was gonna say we should definitely all fair schedule you to come back because there's a lot more things I want to talk about with oh, you. Sure. But we are. Uh, running out of time here today. So, uh, is there anything else you wanted to just uh, plug real quick or anything before we end this year? I don't. <clears throat> yeah, tell us about. This is your time. Tell us about you. Tell us where to find all your stuff. <clears throat> uh, as far as my production, Facebook, uh, it's just Jeremy Jones Audio. And you can. I don't post on it as much as I should, but you can see just like uh, I usually share like the releases that people do. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have a website too, just jeremyjonesaudio.com. And that has, you know, uh, gear list, music, and it has a sheet on there too. You can fill out. Tell me like if you're looking to get a project done. Uh, tell me what you're looking for. What kind of lead time, songs. Yeah, anyway, you can check it out. It's on there. Go straight cool. to my email. I'll get it back to you. It'll and all be linked on the Darkwood Daniel. Oh, great website. Yep, I'll yeah. tag you. And yeah, uh, yeah. 
as far as the bands, uh, Bandcamp. St- can I say Spotify? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Spotify. I mean, we're on. Spotify, we're on Spotify. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. absolutely. Hey, Spotify, <laughs> all your other streaming, whatever you have. Some people have weird shit. Yeah. So any of that, and we're on all of it. Yeah. Bandcamp, <laughs> and then like our uh, Facebook, Instagram. I don't believe that Numskull has an Instagram, but we have Facebook. Don't ever post on it because we don't do anything. <laughs> But yeah, you can keep up with the back to life stuff on there, and uh, hell yeah, awesome. Yeah, Sick. I don't know if there's anything else, really. I mean, uh, any closing thought you want to leave with us? Any kind of uh, bit of knowledge? Got a fun fact for us? No, but can I can I ask you something real quick? Just sure. Like, oh. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, about a little over three years ago. I don't know. I'll just I'll open this with saying like uh I can't stress enough that it's important to like support your local scene and to like the connections that you make with people like how important it is to like always check on them and like be there for them cuz you meet a lot of great people. So b- about 3 and a little over 3 years ago, uh one of my childhood friends uh passed away. He uh, thought it, w- it was a heroin overdose, but it was fentanyl. So, and he had problems in the past, and, um, yeah, he was clean for about a year, a little over a year, and um, got back into it and did it once or twice, and uh, he ended up doing pure fentanyl, and it Whoa. killed it killed him, God. and uh, he was somebody that was really important to me, because uh, it, it didn't matter what aspect of life that we were in, he was always supporting me, um, and all my bands came to shows he hung out with my family and, and um yeah sorry hold on here i'm in no you're good man uh he meant a great deal to me because he always did support me and he was great with no matter who i introduced him to music scene my friends anything my family he was great with everybody <clears throat> so if you know anybody that's struggling or has struggled in the past just reach out to them and tell them that you care about them and that you're always there for them. And it doesn't matter if you don't talk to them a lot anymore, just spark up a conversation because it, it does mean a lot to the people that, um, you know, don't think about that. And that's something that I wish I could have done because leading up to when he passed away, like we weren't, you know, talking as much as we could. And I'm not saying that I could have prevented it, but it's something that, um, you know, I think back on saying like, if I could have been there for him, maybe, things would have been a little bit differently and yeah so always reach out to those people because it, it is important and uh, more than you could ever know and how it pertains to music is like he would come to shows and no matter if you knew him or you didn't know him he was there he bought tickets to your show so whether you know him or not he was always there supporting and he's helping you uh, he's giving you listens he's giving you fans he's supporting you he's buying the ticket he's helping your guarantee so it's like the people that you don't even know are always also impacting your life and you know and uh i know that if he was here now he'd always you know still be around to support everything and uh, i really wish that he was around to meet my son and throughout Mm -hmm. like because i'm in a different stage of my life now and it would have been really important for me to be you know for him to still be around and yeah so always reach out to the people that uh need it and I don't want to leave it on like a really dark note, but yeah, that's something that really no. is important to me, and no. it's it's important to a lot of people. As well. I've I've lost a best friend to heroin overdose as well, right. so I'm, and you're definitely hitting home for me. So, yeah. I I can't agree with that more. Um, Absolutely, it's good to it's good to talk about these kinds of things, mm-hmm. and especially on a platform where you can reach out to other people, and maybe somebody could learn something to that, learn something from what you just said. And thank yeah. you for opening up and yeah, sharing sure. that. We really appreciate that. It's, it's not easy. Um, I mean, it's it's never easy losing anybody. Yeah, you know, it was at, at all at any any caliber whatsoever. And right. it's uh, it's it's important that people talk about that kind of stuff. And thank you very very much Absolutely. for opening up. Yeah, that, that's, it takes a lot. Yeah, that's something I talk about at all my shows too. Do you? We um, write music that has to do with that as well because you know, in you know, in front of people that would like to hear that. And for sure. Because you never know when that song is going to be the song that that person needs to hear. Yeah. It can change their mentality, right. change their attitude. Yeah. 
and the little bit that you talk about it could be, you know, something that somebody needs to hear. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Well, we don't want to. Well, I don't even think I don't want to say we're ending that on a dark note. I think we're actually ending that on a very positive note. Like, I mean, it just out of out of darkness comes light. That, yeah. it, that's always what happens. And so, what better place to you know bring darkness or bring light out of darkness than on Darker with Daniel? Yeah, absolutely. You can always listen to us though on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, everything. All your listening platforms. We're there. If you guys want to be on here, you guys want to be a guest, shoot us an email: darkwithdaniel at gmail dot com. Give us the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why, and we will definitely be in contact. But until next time, I'm Alan. I'm Danny, uh, Daniel, and uh, <laughs> plug our sponsor real quick, Rock Mill Industries. Don't Ooh, forget to check them out. Rock Drop Mill. them a like. Share their information. They're everything you could possibly need when it comes to music as well. And Jeremy, thank you again so much for coming on. Absolutely. Sharing us your, uh, your insight, your information. I hope uh, this reaches out to a bunch of people and... Uh, can help share your message and bring those dollars. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.